Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. And this is Cubase Tips and Tricks for the week of May 23rd, 2025. Let's start off today talking about colors. Do you have enough? And what are your options? If I go up to my toolbar and I hit the color menu button, you can see I have a few colors here. How did I get these colors? And what is this all about? When you begin the journey of examining colors in Cubase, one of the first things to look at is go up to your project menu and come down to the option that says the project color setup. At that point, you'll be given this little dialog menu and it will show you all the colors that you currently have. There are so many options right here that aren't really listed or that you don't see initially. For example, if I take this red color and click on it, then I'm brought to this color picker and I can begin doing all kinds of customizations on the colors, either moving this top bar or the area in the middle. And you're given a picture of what the current color is and then you're given a picture of what the new color is going to be, so you can tell what kind of changes you're making. If I say OK, then that color is put in place. If I hit Apply and I hit my color menu, now that new color is in one of my choices. But how did I get this long list of colors in the first place? There are actually so many colors here now that when I go to any of my menus, I can't even see the full amount of choices because it's become so overwhelmed with all the different colors that I have here. So let's simplify this a little bit. If we go to the third page that says options, we're given a choice that says reset the color set to the factory settings. I'm going to click that, hit apply. Now when I hit this color menu, I only have a very small amount of colors again. And then if I come back over to project and hit my color setup and presets, now I can make some choices here and this apply button is visible and I've not overwhelmed myself with too much information. One thing we can do here, we're given the option to choose the number of basic colors. If I hit this drop down list, it says 8, 16, 24, 32. Let's go ahead and take 32. And now we can see we have a lot more colors already. We have another option. It says the number of color tints. I can choose that option and I can go one, two, or four. Let's choose four. And look at all these extra colors I have now. If I hit apply and I go back to my color menu, that's what I now have. And now I can begin changing things in the project, choosing that color, applying it to a track or an event or whatever I want. So how many colors can we actually have? Again, when we hit the color menu and we see all these colors, we go back to the color setup and the presets. We've already maxed out these lists. This is set to the highest of 32 and the tints is already set to four. But actually, if we go back to color set, move to the right where there's a little gear, we click on that, we're given the option to insert a color. And if I hit that, put in another color, calls it the untitled color. And I can keep hitting this list, adding these extra untitled colors. And it turns out there is no limit to this. In other words, I can keep inserting colors pretty much endlessly here. And then you have to hit apply to actually put them in place. But when I come to the color menu, all those new colors have been added. And it will continue to add those colors, really of any shade or tint, this list will continue to grow, just like the one I showed you originally. And the only limitation is what the screen resolution on your computer allows you to see. Because eventually this list will grow so long that it goes off of the screen and it doesn't have any option to scroll. So you'll no longer be able to see all your actual choices. But as long as you can see it on the screen, you could continue to add or insert colors right until it maxes out at the bottom of your screen. And then as you've seen before, notice all these are pretty much the same color. That's no big deal because when you go back to the color setup, I can click on any one of these, make slight adjustments to it, hit OK, and then I get those extra shades for basically an unlimited amount of colors for whatever I need. Which then leads us to our last question. How do we back up our various configurations of color? Cubase has not provided an option to back these up as an actual preset. But they have given us, when we go back to our color setup and to the options, whatever we have in this project, we could save it as the default. And then we can basically reload the default into any project. These color palettes are saved per project. For example, in this project, I have this long list of colors. Let's go ahead and save that as the default for a second. Click on Save Color as Default and Apply. Let's say this project had the factory settings for its colors. I'm going to click the button to reset. If I save this project and then reopened it, these are the colors that would stay with this project. On the other hand, if I go back to the project and the options and I say reset the color to the default and then hit apply, that color set that I have saved for my default is now this long list, which I've now returned into this project. This allows us to do is basically just save projects with different color schemes if we want to that we could recall later. But more importantly, where I find this useful is if you get a demo project or maybe you download somebody else's template 
and you really like the way they laid out their color scheme or their different palette of colors, simply go up and save that temporarily as your default and then open up whatever project you want those colors to be in. Then click the reset color to default, which is basically like loading a preset, hit apply, and then whatever project you do that in, you'll have your new set of colors. So if you understand the way it works with your project color setup and these various options on these tabs, you should have no problem getting the amount of colors you want in your project or customizing it however you want that suits your workflow. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So in today's episode of Cubase Tips, we talked a little bit about using colors. We were wondering if we have enough and what our various options are when we want to change that. We asked and answered the question of how many colors can we actually have. We did some examples of adding and removing the various colors. And then we talked about how we can save and reload colors from any project later. And we will continue to explore all our different creative options and the various tools that we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here. And I'll see you on the next video.